drinks now. Woo! Yeah. 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 Uh, welcome again to Pop Church. My name is Chrissy, and I'm just one of the team that uh, uh, most of the team you've already met because they've sanitized you and track and traced you and table serviced you and all sorts. Uh, and some of the guys came here at 4.30 to set up this, uh, I don't know, bounce tub, what do you call that? Uh, but I'm really, really excited for you guys to be here, and I know Jay's really excited for you to be here, maybe a tad bit nervous as well. Um, so... I, the biggest thing I want uh, to encourage you is just to feel relaxed, like we're in a pub, uh, and we treat pub church like we're in a pub, so um, do just feel really, really welcome and really relaxed. Um, we're really happy to see you this evening. Uh, so we're just, it's not going to be a long uh, service, we've got a couple of things, Jay's going to talk to us in just a moment, but Jay actually chose two songs uh, tonight, we can't sing them out loud, which for many of you, you'll be happy about that. Um, but we can, you know, quietly, you can read the words. There should be on your tables the little um, barcode thing. Does everybody? Yeah, Chris has one. QR code. So old, I don't know what they're called. So if you want to scan that, or there's a website on the bottom, you could just type it in, then you can get the words to the songs. Um, so even though we can't sing them, they're songs that are really special and important to Jay. And so it'd be well worth um, reading along to those, you, can, you know, maybe quietly to yourself. Uh, but we just want to play these songs. So we've got a song that Jay's chosen, and then Jay's actually going to come and share a little bit of her story and explain what on earth we're all doing here in the pub tonight. So you can grab the words to the song, and uh, Kirsty's going to kick us off with our first song. So we're just going to um, invite Jay now to come, and I just encourage you, send her all the love that you have for her right now, because she's feeling a bit nervous. So uh, we just, yeah, Jay, we're excited to hear your story. Maybe get her a Okay, so um, I always say I'm not really long for talking, but once I start, there's no shutting me up, so get ready, because I'm the woman who did a speech at my wedding. So that probably gives you the idea that when something's about me, I like to have my say. And you're a big threat, so settle in. So, a bit about me. Born in Derby, lived in a 2.4 family home. The family only went to church for weddings and christenings, you know, the usual. Despite this, I was loosely involved with church in various ways. I went to Sunday school when I was little, and there did rainbows, brownies, and guys, and there was a guy leader. All of these were held in churches, and therefore I attended monthly church services, which I enjoyed but none of my family ever came. I moved to Wolverhampton in 2004 to go to university to study nursing. I suppose I've just always been the kind of um, caring type, there for everyone, the people, the, you know, the person that people turn to um, that feel safe, you know, confiding in. When I was at uni, I didn't go to church because well, it wasn't really a dumb thing to be religious. And, you know, I just tried to fit in and meet new people and, you know, fit in more. So, yep, I've used all the excuses in the book. My fam family never went. I wanted to fit in, but I've never ever said I don't believe. I always knew I wanted to get married in church, which we did. I wanted it to be a religious ceremony and I wanted to feel close to God. Bring us a bit more up to date. I've been struggling for mental health. It's not a massive secret and most people in here, in person, are close enough to know about it. For those that don't know, the last few years I've suffered, <coughs> suffered from the deepest, darkest depression. Um, it was caused by, caused by childhood abuse resulting in complex PTSD. I'm not going to say much about it because it doesn't define me. But if anybody ever needs to talk about it, feel free. I'm more than willing to listen, and I hate that anyone might feel like they're alone. Trapped with no secret that I was forced to keep. I knew I could always talk to God, and I did talk to him in my head. Little did I know that really I was praying without the dear God and our men bits. I was certainly talking to God to help me out of the pickle that I, that I was constantly in. And now I suppose he's actually saving. I'm proud I've survived all the terrible things I've gone through and that today I've stayed strong not to cry. I'll put it in brackets so I thought I might be crying right now. I saw it did, but <laughs> so gave me uh, to tell my story today. I'm not embarrassed, I'm not ashamed, I'm just me. I'm a survivor, I'm a Christian, and I'm a proud child of God. Amen. 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 Give my depression. Due 
due to my depression and complex PTSD, several times I've self-harmed and considered ending my life, most recently at the end of last year. But it's only been in the last four or five months that I've really been feeling all positive. Less my thoughts to hit myself and end things, thinking that I can actually get through this thing called life. With your support, a little bit of medication, and a whole lot of God's love. Yeah. I'm also slowly learning to manage my emotions more. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Taking time to think things through before making any decisions which might hurt myself or inadvertently others. I struggle to make decisions, so quite often I'll stop and think, what would Jesus do? Well, most of the time, he'd probably pray if he was in a sticky situation, so I do that too. He used to pray before things, during things, and after things, and that's what I try to do now too. At least if things don't go to my plan, it certainly won't be for a lack of praying. I've also learnt that God has a plan for me. I like that. It's comforting. I know whatever I do, he planned it. He knows I'm capable in what I do, and I trust that God will keep me safe and steer me in the right direction to do life. Due to the abuse I mentioned earlier, my brain literally hasn't developed properly. Who knew? <laughs> Behave. Uh, but it's why I can't remember many important and what should be memorable things that have happened in my life, and why I struggle to remember and recall things on a daily basis. So don't have me in the pub quiz, although we did come forth. Woo! Bounce you wow wow! Anyway, enough of the past, I can't change that. Let's bring you a little bit more up to date. The change in my life. So how did I end up getting baptised in Stafford when I live in Wolverhampton? Well, most people know me uh, and Claire are friends. Well, I met her when she was my swimming world consultant. We were chatting more and more and um, I started to become more friends than just me being a member at the swimming group. She mentioned she was going to be in a Bible session and asked me if I'd like to go along. I asked her what was involved and she was like, beer, Bibles. I was like, okay. But well, I'm sold when I consider I get to spend more time with her because we seem to click and we had a good friendship blossoming. Well, I don't want to say too much, she's right over there. But you know what, she's amazing and she's stuck with me now. Uh, also, being in the pub, what's the worst thing that could happen? So, on the 9th of February, just a couple of months ago, my journey began. I refer to it as my journey because that's what it is. The word journey refers to a personal experience of changing or developing from one state of mind to another. This is definitely what is happening. And you are here, or online, to witness a big part of my journey this evening. Anyway, so I went to the pub, sat down with my Diet Coke, totally out of character. I really wanted a pint, but I thought it would look bad amongst all these Jesus folk. So, sat down, didn't say a word. I didn't know anybody apart from Claire, although I'd seen Chrissy a couple of times. People spoke to me, tried to make a conversation, but being terribly shy, I must have come across as really rude. Sorry, guys. But there's no sense shutting me up now. Now I know them. Well, when we get a word in Abel. <laughs> <laughs> that evening, I sat down with Chrissy afterwards and cried my heart out, heart out. Amongst other things, I explained that I was having problems with mental health due to my past, and she prayed for me. I cried more, but not because I was upset. I actually felt some sort of relief, which I just really can't describe. I felt lighter, I felt accepted, I felt like a weight was being lifted. I, d I don't know, it's just some sort of feeling that I can't describe. I'm not sure what it was, but when I was driving home, I thought, just felt like something just clicked within me. I was pretty sure that I was in this for the long haul, and not just because I was spending time with Claire in the pub for a couple of hours, uh, uh, for an hour or two, everyone. <laughs> also, while I was in my first beer and bible session, someone suggested downloading the version app on my phone, and I was absolutely hooked. I did some of the Bible plans which helped to explain, explain and teach me how to deal with my crippling anxiety and depression. And I felt myself looking forward to going back to being in Bible, and I hoped I'd be more confident and wouldn't cry. But I cried. <laughs> and the time after that. <laughs> I, just, I just feel totally overwhelmed, but totally accepted by my new church family. As I mentioned, I find, I find church overwhelming. And when I say church, I mean the people. Church for me is made up of people and is not the building. Yeah. Since the coronavirus pandemic, we've been using Zoom for Sunday services and other things, which has proved the building is just that. A building is not a necessity for worship. I know that I am accepted and loved by my church family, over the internet and face to face. I don't feel judged, I'm not seen as dirty, or shamed, or a victim. I'm just another sister to my accepting church family. A month or so after I attended, first attended pub church, I started the Explorer course. 
it taught me how little I actually knew about the Bible and Jesus. And to be honest, I felt pretty embarrassed. But I knew I couldn't wait to learn more about Jesus. I was keen to get more involved with him and make him become part of my everyday life. I almost feel like I want to make him proud. I imagine like a daughter wants to make her parents feel happy and proud. I stopped swearing. I used to swear like a trooper, believe it or not. Um, and I tried to be more forgiving and patient. It was much easier than expected, actually. But I knew I needed to do more than that. I really want everyone to feel how I feel. I want everyone to know that they can feel as loved as I do, as my church family do. To feel the unconditional love of the Lord, no matter how much we mess up. We're all sinners, every single one of us. None of us are perfect. But if we let the Lord in, he will forgive us. Amazing, really. He died for our sins before we were even born, and he knew us before we were even in the womb, and has loved us ever since. I hope you can see from this testimony, I do try and not laugh when I'm not crying. <laughs> I try to be the joker and the clown. I'm the one that locks about, and I'm the loud one once I get going. There's something else I am. I am loyal. I'm loyal to you, I'm loyal to my church family, and I'm loyal to Jesus. I'm not being baptised to fit in, or because anybody wants me to, because it's expected of me, or because it's what others have done. I've actually never been to an adult baptism. In fact, any baptism wasn't more than just a sprinkle of water on a baby's forehead. And to be honest, I didn't know what it involved until the recent baptism meeting. So let's see how my hair gets on with this. <laughs> I am doing this for me. I am taking ownership of my faith after careful consideration. I am being baptised because of my love for Jesus my desire to follow him, and a wish to publicly symbolise a change within myself. I'm no longer a victim of my past. I'm a survivor, and I have a future. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ our Lord, and I am here to cleanse myself from the past, as well as taking ownership and announcing I'm proud of my faith, my belief in Jesus Christ, and my love for him. Uh, it's one that's important to Jay, and she especially wanted you guys to hear it tonight. It's, it's another, you know, music for lots of us. It impacts our journey, doesn't it? It, has, it says something to us. So Jay wanted you to hear this song, and then, uh, yeah, then we'll, we'll baptize Jay. to us to hear what you think, right? Because nobody cares what I think. They care what you think, Jay. Uh, and so it's really amazing. I don't know if you guys noticed it. Uh, well, I, I should say, actually, I should say, uh, some of you have never, or like Jay, you've never seen this whole baptism thing. Some of you have seen lots of baptisms. But I think I'm safe in saying that probably none of us have seen this in a pub. I sure, certainly have never done this before. This is not normal for any of us. It's an unusual thing. And yet the thing that I am so excited about tonight was hearing Jay's story. Because I didn't, I, I don't, you can ask Jay, but like, I did not tell her what to say. I, the most coaching I said was, tell us your story. Tell us why. Uh, so that was Jay. And I don't know if you caught this. Um, but she sent it to me ahead of time, just so I would, because uh, I'm like Jay, I'm a sympathy crier, I'm over there like, hold it together, Chrissy. Uh, so I wrote down this thing that Jay said, and maybe you caught it, but she said that after coming along to Pub Church and she started reading in that version app, that Bible app, 
She said, I couldn't wait to learn more about Jesus. I was keen to get more involved with him. Those were Jay's words. She just wanted to learn more about Jesus. And I love that because Jay summed up what it means to be a Christian. For some of us, you're thinking, I've never been to a church, and it's only because it's in a pub and because I love Jay that I'm here tonight, and I totally get that, and I don't blame you. This is my favorite church I've ever been to as well. And I have to say that Jay's explanation is the best explanation of what it means to be a Christian and why we're here that it's just about getting to know Jesus. So you can forget whatever you think you know or don't know about church or Christians or church people or religious stuff, whatever people have told you, you can forget that and just listen to Jay. One, because you know her and you trust her, but also because she did a really good job of explaining what it means to be a Christian. It's just about getting to know Jesus. It's about getting to know Jesus the way that Jay has, understanding that all of us have that same opportunity, that all of us have the opportunity to recognize that we've been made by God, that all of us have the opportunity, like Jay, to recognize that God loves us, and in fact, he loves us so much, like that parent, Jay said, I loved that, Jay, when you said you talked about, uh, you felt a little bit like you wanted to please him like a parent, you just wanted to make him proud. And that's what God is. He's a father. He's a good father. And he loved us so much that he did not want us to suffer for the wrong choices that we make. That's why the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him, like Jay has, will have everlasting life. That this is, we have the opportunity to get to know Jesus in the same way that Jay has. And my, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, and it just when I'm in the pub, this is what always comes to mind. It's from a, play, a place called John chapter 1 in sentence 14. And it says, the word, that's talking about God, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. That literally God loves us so much that God left heaven. He came to earth as Jesus. And he put on skin and bones like me and you. And he moved into the neighborhood. When Jesus was alive, he would have spent way more time in pubs like this, hanging out with people like us and people like Jay, than he would any of the religious people or any of the fancy buildings that you have in your mind. This is where Jesus would be. And so I think this is the perfect place, actually, for Jay to be baptized. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to celebrate with Jane together her baptism. And we're going to have snacks in a few minutes, and we're going to have a few more pints, because the Jesus people drink too, so I don't know why she got the diet <laughs> uh, But just so you understand, this is just the tub. This is just water. There's nothing weird or magical happening here, right? I, 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 I want to be clear about that, that this is a symbol. It's a symbol of hope, right? This is a symbol. It reminds, for, for people like me, who've been getting to know Jesus for slightly longer than Jay, it reminds me every time I see somebody climb into something like this, although I got baptized in the river behind the pastor's house. Uh, but whenever somebody goes to be baptized, it reminds me that even though I've made wrong choices, Jesus loved me enough to die on a cross, he was buried in a grave, and he came back to life. And so because of that... I have the opportunity, and Jay has the opportunity. So when she gets into this water, and she goes under the water, we remember that Jesus was buried. And when Jay comes out of the water, we remember that Jay has hope, and Jay has a new life because Jesus came back to life. It's just a symbol. It's just a picture. And it's one that's not easily forgotten, especially if it happens in a pub. Nobody in here is ever going to forget the night that Jay got baptized in the middle of the most random pub in a small little town in England. Like, we're, none of us is going to forget this moment. And when we remember it, I hope you remember it with hope. The same hope that Jay has. The hope that says that no matter what I've done in my life, no matter who I am, no matter how I've suffered, at the hands of someone else, or because of the stupid things I've done, some of you have done stupid things and you know it, but no matter how I've suffered, God loved me enough to say, I don't actually want you to suffer for those wrong things. I don't want that to be true. And so this is a reminder that there's hope, that you don't have to suffer, that you could know Jesus just like Jay. That's for someone, I believe, and what I've been praying, and I'll just share my little secret with you, what I've been praying is that there's somebody here tonight who's just like Jay, who's going to walk out of here, and they're going to say, I just can't wait to learn more about Jesus. I'm really keen to get involved with him.
Jay, and I know that's Jay's hope too, because she yeah. said that's what she wants for all of you, that you guys would know the hope and the joy and the love that she's found in Jesus. And that's why she's here to share her story. So should we get on with it now? Yeah. Get the preacher to stop talking. All right, come on, Jay, you're going to have to climb in. I cannot promise how warm it is, but Matt tried hard. He did boil some kettles like 47 times. I'm really sorry. You're gonna to wanna. To, if you need to move around to see a little bit, like you, you can a little bit. Just uh, yeah. Right. How are we doing, Jay? So you might want to come down this end a little bit more. Yeah. So we're gonna, Jay. I'm gonna ask you two questions. She's like, woo, Wonder Woman. Right. So Jay, I've got two questions for you. Yeah. My first question is Jay. Have you accepted that Jesus has forgiven your sins and he's your savior? Yes. Yes. Okay. Jay, do you now choose to follow Jesus with your whole life? I do. Yeah. Fabulous. All right, so Jay, I'm going to have you sit down now. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Maybe need to cheer for her because it's going to be a You can do it. You're going to want to sit because it hurts <laughs> Right. I'm going to need somebody to shake this mic in a moment. Right. So, Jay, on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, baptizing you, burying you in his death, and raising you to a new life in his resurrection. blossom and grown uh, over the last few months. You really are an amazing, awesome lady. You really are. I don't think you realise that, but you are. Um, there's a, just a short reading from Hebrews 13, verse 5. It says, I will never under any circumstances desert you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support, nor will I, nor will I in any degree leave you helpless. No, nor will I forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you. And that's a promise from God, because he loves you, because you're his child. And also, one more Bible reading, and I know you know this one. It's Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you where you go. And that's a real promise, isn't it? Yeah. So, be, be courageous in mission. Be who you were born to be who God wants you to be. And we know that is. We, we know you're a warrior for Christ. That's what you're born to be, isn't it? So let's just share a prayer together. Lord, we want to pray for Jay. And thank you for the amazing person that she really is. We just ask you, Lord, to bless her, to fill her to overflowing with your love and with your power and your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that she brings to all of those lives that she touches every day. Make us strong and courageous, Lord. Always ready with a word for those who need to hear your voice who are in darkness. On those days where she may face hardship and trial, ignite that fire that you've put in her to never give up, but to keep fighting for you. Bless this amazing, beautiful, wonderful lady, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you, your will will be done in and through her. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much for Jay, for her energy, her enthusiasm to learn more about you. And we pray that she senses your presence here this evening and that as she moves forward on her journey, she's able to relax in the knowledge that she can be at one with you. We thank you that she's such an amazing lady and for the privilege of being here this evening at her baptism. And I also chose 
Joshua 1 9. And we didn't know that until we stood over there. So have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. So before you go today, let's pray and pray this afternoon. And I wasn't planning to share scripture, but this one came to mind. So I'm going to read it to you quickly. And of course, it's from Ephesians, because it would be, wouldn't it? It's Ephesians 3, uh, starting in verse 17. It says, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Jay, that is my prayer for you, that you stay rooted in God's love and that no matter what you face and no matter what comes at you, that you never forget in this journey, highs and lows, ups and downs, good days and bad days, dark days and lighter days, that you never forget how big God's love, how far it stretches, how accepted and chosen and wanted you are, and that when you look back, because it's been a few months, but years down the road, when you look back at the journey and you look back at the road you traveled, you can honestly say, wow, God did so much more than I could have imagined, and I'm so lucky that I met Jesus. That's my prayer for you, Jeff. Uh, God, I love, uh, I love you so much, and I thank you for Jay, and I love who she is. And I pray that you'll continue to strengthen her, that you'll continue to show her that, that she is your beloved daughter, that you are so pleased with her, and there's nothing she has to do, because she is absolutely perfect the way you've made her. I pray that you'll continue to help her to grow in her faith and to be more like you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Right. So we've got one last song because we never end pub church without it, and Jay obviously needs a chance to change. So we're going to do one last song, then we're going to have more drinks, and we're going to have snacks, and there might be a couple other people who have some stuff to share with you, but we'll let you yeah. change out of your wet clothes first. So we've got one last song, and then we'll mingle, well, we won't, we'll stay seated. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for coming tonight. I hope you hang out for a little while. Jay's brought snacks for everyone to have nibbles. And Shell and uh, Matt will be coming around to take more drink orders. Um, so please feel free to hang out and chat and um, you know give your uh, elbow bumps to Jay and you know all of that good stuff. But thank you so much for coming, guys.